Go Ellsworth, brought to you by these proud community sponsors, Anita Hoffines. Dr. Mark Herzog. Hi, this is Carol Kratzer, Executive Director of the Ellsworth Canopolis Area Chamber of Commerce. And this is our Ellsworth Did You Know? And today we're here with Robert Rogers. Welcome, Robert. And we are here for the Ellsworth Area. Area oh, I knew I was going to do that. Ellsworth Area, Area Arts, Arts Council. Council. Okay, <laughs> which is our local gallery in Ellsworth. And they are open Monday through Friday, 1230 to 430. And they have some amazing art. And Later in this interview, we're going to be talking to one of their artists that's here now. But Robert, welcome and thank you for having us. <laughs> Quite well. And Quite welcome. Um, tell me a little bit about the history of the um, Arts Council. Well, it started in the winter of 1989. Uh, Julie Britton and uh, a group well, of a, couple of, a, couple, a couple of other Ellsworth la ladies, friends of hers, got to discussing uh, the possibility of having an art gallery here, which uh, turned out uh, we were, there was enough response that in the beginning of uh, 1990, it was incorporated as a uh, charitable organization and it has continued ever since. We were originally located at a address across the street from our current address here, but we moved here in aught nine. So we've been here Six, well, we're in it going into our sixth year here at this current location. And this is, as we said, a charitable organization. Yes, so it, it, it is. is it is financed five, totally by donations from the public. Well, we do get a little support from the city, which we are very, very appreciative of. But we do not receive any, we do not receive any state or federal assistance, whatever. All of our people, all of our workers are volunteers, and we are essentially it is the local people, the memberships of local people who keep the thing uh, functioning. And you have had some amazing artists that have shown work here, um, and then you have some local artists who keep some work here, your dad being one of them. Yes, and uh, well, we've had Ellsworth, Kansas, well, El the com county has been unusual in that three of its residents have been honored as governor's artists over the years. Uh, Charles Rogers, Betty Kepka Belton, and Vernon Breka. All have been, and all of them were, have been, interna have become internationally known as artists from Kansas which uh, helps to offset the great cultural desert image that uh, too often people the, think state, the state suffers a bit from that. Yes, I people mean, think the, that Kansas the, the, is nothing the, but flat. They've never been to Ellsworth. <laughs> but, um, and those, you have, you have exhibits from those three people here that are up all the time. Essentially, yes. Yeah, small, uh, small right. displays. Yes, we have, we have their work on display, and then we have had uh, other internationally known, like uh, Dr. Richard Bergen, the uh, sculptor of Ad Astra, the Indian archer on the Capitol Dome, and uh, Dennis Wheaton, uh, the late uh, Gordon and Ray Zaradnik. So we've, yes, we have had. Uh, internationally known artists, and then we've also had 
local artists, and it's amazing the number of people who have artistic abilities. It's uh, I am, in the middle of nowhere, I am, only we aren't nowhere. Exactly, <laughs> and I am always amazed at how talented Ellsworth County residents are, and, and the variety that we get from models to sculpture to paintings to eggs to, I mean, you name it, soup to nuts. There. We, are, we are so very lucky. Um, now, this month, you change your, your exhibits about every six weeks. And I know last, last month was Kids Art, which you have every year, which yes. is always very popular because the kids right. just love to come and see their art. And I know that one of your members works very closely with the schools to get that put together. And we really appreciate it. Um, right now, you have pottery and paintings, oil paintings that are on display. Um, we will talk to the painter in a moment, but you have Ken Klostermeyer um, pottery right. that's on mm -hmm. display right now, and that'll go to the middle of May. And then what do you have coming up in the future? Well, I'm not quite sure of that. I'm sorry to say, I'm not the exhibit coordinator. Uh, I'm, I've had some other hats, but that's not one of them. Uh, I'm, I should have checked with Sharon as to see what we had coming up. But, but she does amazing, amazing work. She's, yeah, she has done amazingly well. Uh, she has contacts all over the place, and she's always looking for new talent. And so if so, you're talented, yes, contact uh, them. We would love to see your stuff. Yes, if, if anybody has, if, any, if they do anything, quilting, uh, painting, sculpture, pottery, wood carving, Photography, you name it. I mean, our, our slogan is fine art, folk art. Art is for everyone. And that, uh, that's, that's our motto. And we have had, a, as you said, an amazing variety over the years. And it's always so. fun to come here. Robert, so is there anything else you want us to know about the art gallery? Well, we have a lot of programs going on. We have a youth art program in the summer. Uh, we have the annual, this will be our fifth year coming up this fall, the annual Writers of the Prairie contest. We, uh, you mentioned we, that we work with the school, not just Youth Art Month in the official March months, but also uh, we have uh, have classes in cooperation with the grade school, and we have uh, adult classes in all sorts of different mediums. We've had uh, painting classes, uh, wreath making classes. We have uh, well, we uh, also host. Uh, groups uh, like, for instance, we've had uh, the it was a musical group who has met here. One of the study sororities meets here on an occasional basis. The Cowtown Carvers meet. In our, we have a workroom, a classroom area, as well as the exhibit area, and the Cowtown Carvers you use that. And of course, as opportunities present themselves, we have hosted various musical events. We've had concerts here. Uh, we have, in the past, we have sponsored both live theater and puppet shows. Uh, in co that was done in conjunction with the schools. We have a, a wide variety of programs and things going on. So there's uh, always something going on. Yes, we, yeah, we do, uh, we have all sorts of civic functions as well as uh, just shows. I mean, we're, we're more than that. Yes, you are. <laughs> so. Okay, so. And then how do we contact you? Uh, well, I think we're in the phone book. Okay, so we'll have I your phone number. Yes, I will. And you have an email address, yes, we'll, so we'll have right, your email we'll get, 
We'll get those for you. Yeah, I don't. I don't call in very often. That's That's like like your house number. You never know where you're. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You don't call yourself. Right. (laughs) I don't. I don't call in very often. I'm more often calling out. So I. But we'll get those that information for you. So we will. Can people, if if they're interested, can contact us. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here. So, Ellsworth Area Arts Council Art Gallery is open Monday through Friday. 12.30 12.30 to 4.30, it is free. Please bring your kids, bring your parents, bring your grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, and come see some gorgeous art. And thank you for having us. You're quite welcome. We're here today with Matt Miller. And Matt is from Hayes. And Matt, you have some beautiful artwork that you're displaying here at the gallery this month through the middle of May. And he is just one of the many wonderful artists that are displayed here. They change their displays about every six weeks and it's just amazing what they have. So Matt's gonna tell us a little bit about his art. So we're gonna start with this wall, which is a gallery of family members, right? Yes, exactly. Um, It's kind of a group of paintings that really, well, started with a, a project that I was doing in school, a self portrait. Uh, this one here, and then just kind of went on from there. Um, just thought it would be a good idea to, to you know, include the immediate family. So my parents are on the end, my older sister and my younger sister, I'm kind of the, the middle child. So um, it just kind of worked out as a good group. Um, a, and if you notice, um, something that's interesting about them, I think, is uh, the materials used. I was going to ask about that. There's, um, I'm using the, the cut paper samples from, you know, from a paint store. In this case, Home Depot. And it kind of gets, I always feel like the more kind of personal you can make your work, it's going to translate, you know, to a, a more kind of a powerful piece that way. So when I remember my kids doing one, sort of like this, where they didn't use paint samples, but they had to drink half of a magazine picture and then do the other half. Yeah. And this sort of reminds me of that kind of thing. It just kind of, it kind of shifts you and breaks you from your, you know, your, your normal attitudes about something, I think, maybe. Um, but the more personal, kind of back to that idea, my dad kind of, he uh, mixes paint at Home Depot. So that kind of stems you and then my mom's a hairdresser, so I kind of com- like fused those two, and you know, kind of the whole idea of family that way, like how everything is kind of created that way. It's the fusion of the parents, and and then everything kind of came out nicely that way. I think it kind of oh, that, came together as a good group of. That's of amazing work. because that's what art's all about. Art's about the artist, mm-hmm. and it connects with us, but. It's about what you're feeling or what you're doing. And so, you know, we talked a little bit earlier and you talk about, well, sometimes I can't explain what I'm thinking when I do it. Sure. But this so explains it so nicely that you, you know, I had a school project. Well, then I expanded it and did it with my family. Sure. And, you know, well, my dad does this, so we did this. And my mom's this, and we did this. I think that's amazing. I and think they're beautiful. There can be, uh, there can be kind of like a, a du- almost like a double standard, I think, sometimes with, with art people, with creative people. You know, like, um, I don't know, I don't ask a plumber, you know, exactly why he does what he does, you know. So there's, there's a little bit of anxiety, I think, involved that people think, you know. That you should be able to explain everything. Yeah, but it. I can understand totally, like, people wanting to be interested and, and know kind of what you're doing. It's, 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 it's kind of a plus and it helps you actually just kind of helps you move from piece to piece too that way. Now we have a couple pieces here behind us. Okay. This looks like maybe you and your dad. Yeah, this is kind of a, it's actually taken from um, a photo of my nephew, but kind of a, the, a kind of that idea, the father uh-huh. son relationship. And um, you'll notice it's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of there again, kind of trying to fuse two uh, references into one and sometimes you get, it just seems like you get more interesting um, well imagery that way 
uh, something more powerful is created that way when you're trying to fuse two things that might not kind of go together, but. Well, and I love your work because it also explains that you don't have to do the same thing all the time yeah. to be an artist. Sure. You know, for years we thought everybody had to do the same thing, or I yeah. guess I was always afraid of being, I, would, I can't draw a straight line. So. so like a certain style you know, or something. Yeah, 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 and this is just amazing, so. I think it helps in the end to just kind of be open to as to whatever because you know if you're open then I don't know I kind of feel like maybe the viewer will kind of it'll be a kind of reciprocal thing they may not know exactly what's going on but it'll kind of pull them in maybe did you always like art in school uh yeah I think so I mean I um I grew up in Topeka and and you know had um good really good teachers um drawing teachers just kind of uh general art teachers, but then like a, a drawing teacher that I remember in, in uh, middle school, um, his name is Mike Henry. Um, and then just kind of uh, went from there. I was kind of always in studio um, art in high school, but um, I kind of grew up kind of in the athletic world too, you know, so a lot of traveling. So I think that kind of, um, that kind of helps too when you're traveling, you're seeing different places. Yeah, it exposes you to a lot of things. So you're always kind of like looking at different, uh, I don't know whether it's aspects of landscape or whatever it is. I like that you remember a certain teacher. That's oh, yeah. the teacher in me. That's what I did for years before I mm -hmm. took this on. And, and it's. Yeah, you know. I've, I've had lots of good ones. All right, so now we've moved to another section in the gallery where Matt has some very interesting larger pieces. Mm -hmm. And he, he, we were talking about it a little earlier and he said I didn't know how he was gonna explain it, so I'm gonna make him do it. But, <laughs> so let's look at this one first. Okay. Okay, to me as someone who's never seen it before, it looks like it, well, what these look like to me is that you've gone with real life and some kind of model. Sure. type thing. So this is like on a golf course and the models. What what was your thinking behind something like this? Well, I, I work seasonally at a golf course, so I think that's kind of the, the impetus for it. But um, I don't know. This is one of those things where you don't know exactly. I kind of started painting these. They're basically crash test dummies. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we've all kind of been in like auto accidents and I think I'm probably thinking a lot in this one and maybe a couple of the other ones here about kind of ideas of trauma uh -huh. and how things like that stick with you and and then I guess the dummies it becomes um, kind of a just a way to study the figure without having to have a model or something and then so it's all about kind of bridging um, well, scale, like the golf cart kind of becomes a stand-in for a, a larger vehicle or, um, so I, I don't know if that <laughs> exactly no, I think makes it, I sense. Think it, but, it does make sense. Um, just a way to kind of investigate those uh, traumatic things that happen to us. No, I and think. this one over here, I really think, really for sure. explains that yeah. a whole lot. I really... I like that one, and I don't. I can't. I can't tell you why. Well, it's kind of. I like it, but it's the one of the first pieces that really kind of grabbed me when I walked in here, and you know. But that it, that explains that whole you know test dummy and car crash and mm -hmm. trauma and all the things that go through your mind as you're going in that situation. Sure. Because I mean, there's just wild things going through your mind, and I think this is just amazing. Well, it's, it's kind of like sometimes I think about. Um, you know, we're such a civilized uh, group of people, and. You know, but we still climb into cars and we get into accidents and we, you know, all go through a lot of this stuff that like, you know, it, you're just kind of thinking, kind of double taking, I guess, or uh, reinvestigating why you do some things sometimes uh -huh. like that, that, you know, we take for granted, I think, a lot of times. And I love the way you did the frames in sort of like a, you know, a caution tape yeah. type, you know, pattern. Because, I mean, the yellow and black one, of course, that's what we think of when we think of caution tape. But even mm -hmm. the green and black, and yeah. here you have the red and white. And it, it kind of all started with this one at the golf course, or a lot of, probably a lot of municipalities that have the, 
the stanchions that uh -huh. fall off uh -huh. from a triangle. Uh -huh. So that's kind of what gave me the whole idea. And then if you have a group of paintings, you kind of want to bridge those all together. So and it's it's amazing. Yeah. And that's done with tape. Yeah, it's just kind of taped off. I've used stains for the wood. A lot of these bigger frames, I think, were cedar in order to keep the weight down because that cedar. Well, this one here is is kind of like uh, it's bare, the bare cedar. bare wood, yeah. But it's I mean, cedar is a beautiful wood, but it doesn't. It's not that strong. So you kind of have to be aware of how you're using it, but I try to use it when I can. But yeah, uh, the stains, taping, just various types of paint and just kind of testing, you know, Amazing. experimenting. Amazing. Thank you. I am not that kind of creative, <laughs> so. All right, so now we've moved to the last section in the gallery that's your work. And these are much smaller but most of these are landscapes. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing that um, I have a couple that look like my house. <laughs> and I know, I've never met Matt before, so they're not my house, but they look like my house. And then we're standing right here, and these are some night paintings. So we have some landscapes this way, and we have some landscapes this way. But we have this lovely little grouping of night paintings, and I love this tall one. It's like one of the only tall ones in yeah. the thing. and. Um, so let's talk about this one a little bit, and then we'll talk about the whole thing. Okay. So what was this of? This is a view looking back towards Hayes from Victoria, Kansas. So, you know, 15 minutes uh, to the east of Hayes. Uh, a, I had a friend that helped me move the paintings over here, Mikey Knutson. He's another artist, and he has a studio there along with a, a professor uh, at Fort Hayes, Joel Dugan, um, and he, just kind of a view at night, we kind of started doing these night paintings. Um, Mikey was kind of instrumental in getting me do a lot of that. Um, you know, so painting's all about kind of capturing light. Uh -huh. So at night, you have all these kind of shifts and um, kind of strange moods and uh, kind of emotional connections you can make with different colors, uh, and of course, you know, just being out there at night. Um, so they're kind of moody pieces almost, and they kind of, well, like I was telling you, the kind of a roadblock sign uh -huh. that kind of relates to the frames, and mm -hmm. there's always that kind of, you start to notice threads that kind of. Yeah, we were just discussing how, if you look at the whole thing, they're all kind of connected, mm -hmm. even though they're totally different pieces mm -hmm. done totally different times. Sure. But by you, there's there's a connection between each piece. Yeah, it's nice to see them all together. So you start to develop different relationships between them. And then basically kind of, you can build from that and keep going. You know, when you're kind of looking at some of these, I kind of been telling people that it's sometimes it's not even important that you're painting uh, this scene, uh -huh. really what happens is it kind of opens you up more to what, you, what you're not looking at, you're the periphery. Uh -huh. So the next, it, it just makes you want to make more to get to know what's over here or, you know, and that can include, you know, it starts to, it starts to kind of seep in with, with everything, like people, uh -huh. you, you'll, wanna, you you'll be more open towards uh, the way you look at yeah. people, the way you do your relationships, sure. the way you look at the world. Sure. You know, you come with new eyes as you start focusing on something. Sure. It really does. And that sounds funny that you would focus so much on something, but yeah. it would open up it what you It seems contradictory, see yeah. To everything else. Because it takes a lot of focus, you know. You know, it depends on, you know, what kind of style or what you're going after, but it kind of it kind of is contradictory to focus so much. But it, it almost becomes more important to, the, to just kind of help you keep moving on, onward. Wonderful. So. Okay, I have one more question. It's a little hard. All right. Okay. What would you say to yourself when you were younger and just learning how to draw? What would I say to myself? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you've learned that you would have told yourself sooner? Um, I guess just... Uh, uh, just that, just to 
just keep doing it and to to kind of um, it's a it's a uh, kind of a valid thing to do. I think it kind of goes back to um, what I was saying about the double standard idea. Like it's not just kind of a um, just you know something to keep the kids busy or something to you know. It's really uh, it. it you're trying to bridge, uh, make uh, connections between your emotions, I think, and your, the, your surroundings, your, you know, what's around you. And art is kind of one of the better ways to do that. So just to kind of, I would have told myself to just, you know, get into it a little bit more, you know. We're, we're so busy growing up, you know, and it's good to be running around and be active and as much as you can, but there's all kinds of... This is of, important, too. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of importance to it. So. Yeah, yeah. So parents, your kids <laughs> can draw. <laughs> Could end up like this. Thank you. Thank you. Go Ellsworth, brought to you by these proud community sponsors, Anita Hoffines. Dr. Mark Herzog.